The House on the Bay is located in Brighton, overlooking Port Phillip Bay. Brighton has always been a playground for Melbourne and this house celebrates the notion of a beachside residence but also being something that's a bit more of a permanent home. One of the clients actually grew up along this stretch of beach and this was very much a forever home for them. When we first met the clients on site, it became really evident that the site was incredibly public. That became a really important thing and theme that kept reoccurring as we developed the design and how to mitigate this privacy with these remarkable views. It led the building and the design intent to create this cloistered building with a secluded courtyard in the middle which you could inhabit year round and be outside but also experience views out to the bay. House on the Bay is organised over three levels. Entry is on the middle level, or the first floor, which contains the main living spaces and the main bedroom, ensuite, and two studies. As you open the door, you're presented with the internal courtyard with the layer of the bay beyond. And that's really the moment where the site is celebrated. On the ground floor, there's secondary bedrooms with a gym and car parking. And on the upper level is a roof terrace, which has been imagined as this really beautiful garden space. There's very different ways to experience the site, just in terms of where you are vertically. The form of the building was derived around this idea of protection. We actually took reference to the Brighton Sea Baths, which are positioned closely adjacent to the site. And we really wanted this building to reflect that characteristic. And that relationship with a more organic landscape that moves around it was a really striking presence. The expression of the facade was really about trying to enhance this idea of a weathered object within the landscape. We engaged with Shade Factor early in the project and worked with them to develop this really highly bespoke system. It affords quite a lot of flexibility for the clients, creates a lot of animation for that facade and it's been a delight. We were interested in exploring this idea of shadow play on the facade. To enhance this idea, we employed scallops. When it's not receiving light, it's really flat and monolithic but then when light starts to pass over it, it really becomes quite corrugated and stripy and then it bleeds into this really diffuse light across the scallop. I think that was really important for us, but also the client and the sense of what they wanted the building to look like. The materials of the home are fairly pared back. I think the emphasis is really on something that's robust. It's predominantly precast concrete, which has been treated in two ways. A fluted precast panel to the external of the building, and then when you start to come into the building itself and into the internal courtyard, it's a polished precast panel that's then been sandblasted. So it feels like it's something that's been eroded. The other predominant material is really the timber battens, which offer a bit more tactility and transparency through the courtyard areas and also to the main facade. Internally, the materials are quite pared back and minimal, with darker tones on the floor and the ceiling to really emphasise that main view out to the bay. The materials were also considered as this canvas that things were painted onto. The landscape and the courtyards, the roof terrace, they became really important contributors to what the overall palette of the building is. I think one of the aspects we're most proud of with House on the Bay is the way that you connect to the landscape. I think this house achieves the celebration of the view while offering a level of privacy and comfort. And I think that's something we're quite proud of.